we consumers of processed maize and we produce an average of about 40 million bags of maize a year yet our demand is about 55 bags of maize a year our deficit therefore is approximately 10 to 15 million bags of maize a year food security my second point should not be premised on maize consumption alone. We speak to all of us as Kenyans. There are other varieties of organic food, such as sorghum, millet. Some of us grew on millet. And I can tell you, the only competitors are the birds. <laughs> Sweet potatoes, cassava, etc. that can complement or substitute shortage of maize diet. Kenyans ought to be sensitized on the need to diversify their eating culture and be able to demonopolize their dependency on a few staples like maize and rice. Our point number three, the low cost of BT maize is as a result of highly subsidized farm implements and sophisticated mechanized agricultural practices in the first world. Even if our farmers adopt the BT maize seed, this will not bring down the cost of maize since the price is artificially manipulated by the profit-oriented multinationals. The government can plug this deficit, we dare offer this advice, by supporting our farmers to produce more through better extension services, better inputs, climate resilient, and agroecological practices. Be able to reduce post-harvest losses and trade with our known GM neighbors rather than resorting to the import importation of risky GMO maize. Our point number four, I'm now at page five, I told you there are six pages, shown gray areas as far as the safety of consumption of GMOs is concerned. This poses a grave challenge to already emaciated healthcare system in the long term. The dependence of GMOs on toxic herbicides is a threat to human health and the environment. The rush, therefore, to introduce GMO is alarming when the abled in society, as well as many developed countries, are going organic. In fact, you go to any supermarket in Europe and you want to buy GMO food, the shop owners will tell you, this is GMO, this is organic. And the organic food is more expensive than the GMO. This is the reality. We therefore must remain organic and avoid acceleration of food-related diseases such as cancer. Point number five, due to patents, our food system will be at the mercy of the multinational companies which own GMO technology, while our indigenous seeds and unique biodiversity will be facing extinction owing to the poor regulatory framework on GMOs in Kenya. In addition, Kenya fails to provide mechanisms for liability and redress in the event of possible harmful effects arising from the consumption and use of GMOs, or compensation for our farmers in case of contamination of the indigenous crops. We therefore direct National Biodiversity Authority as part of its mandate to ensure that these safeguards and redress mechanisms are in place. It's indeed their duty to make sure they are. Our point number six, on such a weighty matter, especially as concerns food, food, and food security. There should have been nationwide discourse through public engagement, education, and participation. The government did not engage in public participation. We shall therefore be progressing this conversation to the National Assembly and to the Senate. We urge our leaders to take this challenge. Point number seven. The church and religious institutions need to add their voice to that of the civil society in condemning introduction of genetically modified food crops and pesticides in Kenya. Although it was six page, it's an important matter. It's actually a matter of life and death. Not political at all. Absolutely not. But this is our life. Fellow Kenyans, in conclusion, the long-term effects of GMOs in Kenya outweigh the short-term benefits if indeed there are any. Reverting after opening our doors to GMOs will be a Herculean task. I therefore urge each and every one of us 
to take time and research into the truth that I've shared with you this afternoon. We must have guard the safety of our future generations and protect our sovereignty at all costs from manipulation and penetration by foreign entities.